Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today uh, for our final webinar in the Summer Meals webinar series about getting the word out, outreach and advertising for Summer Meals. Uh, I'm here today with, this is, my name is Derek Lambert with Hunger Free Vermont. I'm uh, the Child Nutrition Initiative Manager there. I'm here with the Vermont Agency of Education's Child Nutrition Consultant, Nancy Lewis. Nancy. Hi, hi, everyone. Uh, and just to make sure before we get started, I um, want to make sure everyone is hearing us okay. If you can hear the, uh, if you can hear the sound of today's webinar, you'll see that there is a little uh, task bar that is uh, available for you to do a few different things, to manipulate your audio options, to ask questions, to open or hide the screen panel. If you can hear us, please click on the raise your hand so that we can, um, please click raise your hand so we'll know that people can hear us today. Can someone please click on raise your hand? All right. So if anyone can hear me, you want to click right here where it says raise your hand to make sure that we can hear. All right, folks, so we're just waiting another minute for some folks to get on here, and we're going to make sure everyone can hear us, uh, and then we'll get started with today's webinar. So please uh, let us know if you can hear us. Try your star one again. Hello, everybody. Can you hear us? Could somebody... Either send me a note that you can hear us or raise your hand if you can hear us. Yeah, we're just trying to confirm that the sound's working today. Please click on raise your hand. So. Oh, Angelique. Great. Thank you. You can hear us. Okay. I think we had trouble. We, I think we muted ourselves. So okay. hopefully... You can all hear us now, so let's introduce ourselves Right, then. great. So once again, uh, I'm Derek Lambert with Hunger Free Vermont. Uh, I'm joined by, uh, actually I'm joining uh, Nancy Lewis today at the Vermont Agency of Education. Uh, and Nancy, this is the last webinar in our series today. Uh, so I want to remind everyone, uh, if this is your first webinar or if you've been listening to all of them so far since January, uh, they are all recorded and available on YouTube. Um, I will send out a, a link to everyone who is registered for the webinar to be able to go back and listen to them. Uh, and also there will be a link sent out to the food service and summer food service listserv uh, after today's webinar. So if you or someone you know or someone you work with would like to have more information about summer meals, um, this is a great resource that you can have to um, this is a great resource that you can have to learn more about the program and how it operates. So uh, without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, just want to think today about some of our objectives. We want to try to adopt four guiding principles to keep in mind with all of the outreach we do in the community. Today's webinar is about outreach and advertising, how to raise the profile of your summer meals program. We want to recognize something that uh, many people already know and many people already practice, but that is the positive impact of combining activities with meals, both for the children that you serve and then also for the programs that you operate. Uh, we'll review the six most common methods used for outreach and for advertising uh, for summer meal sites. And we'll learn from the outreach experience of other summer meal providers. Um, we actually don't have any guests with us today. But we do have, um, Nancy and I are fortunate to work with a lot of summer meal sponsors and we hear a lot of really good uh, examples of the outreach and advertising that's happening around the state. So uh, Nancy, we'll do the best we can to share that information uh, and then we will have time at the end for questions if there are any. I uh, would like to remind everyone, if you have a question, please don't hesitate to go down here in the questions bar and enter your question. 
uh, so that you can then uh, they, they make can't it see done. that bar. Oh, so. that's right. That's true. <laughs> if you have, if you would like to send something through chat or to ask a question, please just let us know. Send it in, and we will um, be happy to deal with those. So, um, Nancy, these are some of the guiding principles that we see in terms of. Uh, how we reach families, how we really make children and families aware of the summer meal program, some of the language that we use around this. Um, and I'm, I'm going to go through them, and if, if you could just give some feedback in your experience, that'd be great. One of the things we note is that multiple channels of information work best to reach kids and families with information. What we find out, and what I've heard, Nancy, and maybe you can speak to this, is that uh, if people only see it one time, or if they only see, uh, hear about the program one time, they may not be, uh, uh, they may not participate, but the more they hear about it, the more likely kids and families are to make use of this program. Right. So, the, so what you're trying to go, especially if you have open sites, and I know, know not all of you are trying to get folks into the community, but for those of you who are, and you're really wanting to have as many meals as possible for um, not only feeding the kids, as many kids, but also for um, making your finances look really good, you need to, to find where people are. So are there places in your community that people would be hanging out? Because not everybody reads the paper. So we know there are, um, there are places like libraries or grocery stores, but the USDA also requires that schools help you with your advertising. So right now, while school is still in session, you should be getting um, information out to families through, um, through, through the school, either through some sort of uh, material they sent home or a newsletter. Maybe they have websites. Um, that's a really important resource because they, get, they do a lot of communications to families. But you want to think about in your community, where do people go? What are some really visible places? And then also what you're striving for is for people to become aware that your site exists. So it's going to be a learning for them. They have to come to trust that, oh, there is something there. There's good food there. And it's going to keep happening. So you're trying to get people to learn about that. You're trying to teach them that, yes, this is going to be going on for, for this amount of time. So you can't make any assumptions about people and how they're going to behave um, with regards to your program. You have to really reach out to them and, um, and let them know that, yes, you are here. You're trustworthy. Maybe, um, maybe they're going to hear about it from some friends who have gone. And um, it it's really is a learning process, especially if you're a new site in the community um, for this year, that it's going to be kind of a a testing of the waters for people. So you want to help them along and encourage them with that. And, you know, I think, Nancy, you just, to your point, you were just talking about the fact that now is the time to start conducting that outreach, to do it early, to do it in as many different ways as possible. And something she mentioned as well, to not assume that families either know about the service or are aware of the quality of the service you provide. And, and you know, we, what we see often is that as people continue and as the program becomes more well established, uh, participation increases. People tend to come, uh, you know, more often, or people tend to be more aware of the program, and so the um, the number of meals served can increase. The number of kids that are able to benefit from the program. So obviously, as a program operates longer, it becomes more well known. But also, this outreach and advertising is a great way to get to that point faster. Right. As well. So the, you know, so the sort of balloon out over the summer word word will spread, but you've got to think about early on who are trusted people in your community and where are maybe people going for food, so there might be food banks. Later on, we're showing you, we're going to show you a little business card we put together. Um, there's this also an idea that you want to be touching base with other service providers in the community, so when they're meeting with families, they can tell them where to go for meals. So we're, we have a little tool that we can help you with that. You can even think of places like hospitals and doctor's offices or you know, any place people might be meeting and might be meeting with people that they trust and um, might be turning to for some other services. So that might be a big way to get people to know about your program. That's a great point. It makes me think about the fact that the Vermont Department of Health has been a great partner in getting the word out. So you're right, Nancy. In addition to food service, in addition to schools, there may be other key partners within the community who also see the value in programs like these and are in a position to help with outreach. And I'm just thinking about how, you know, how do any of us um, learn about something new and think it relates to us? Somehow, somehow there needs to be a connection with the families to say, oh yeah, this is something for me. So how is that connection going to happen? How are you going to 
do some sort of media poster, something that families will go, oh, well, maybe this is for me. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and one thing, you know, we have uh, Nancy just mentioned the summer meals business card. That once again, as she'll mention later, you can uh, request some of those for distribution for your program. Uh, we're also going to look at some poster templates. We're going to look at some other materials for outreach. Uh, and we encourage people to use these and also to adapt them to their own communities as appropriate. Uh, and specifically to try to avoid the stigma uh, that sometimes can be perceived in programs uh, like, like the Summer Meal Service Program and really try to find ways to encourage all children to participate because uh, you know, in many, in all of these open sites, truly everyone can come and take part. And uh, the, the 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 folks who do serve these meals uh, are only boosted. You know, uh, the financial help of the programs and also the service to the community is increased uh, as the participation grows. So we have a lot of materials that will encourage people to use. But I would also just say that you know, in the way you talk about the program and in the way that it is. Um, promoted in the community to, to try to make sure that this is open to everyone. Yeah, and it, and it is hard, and I know our materials have free meals on them, but even using language like free meals, that may, uh, people may identify with, oh, well, that's only for people who are poor. I don't want to see myself as poor. So we need to find a way to market our programs as these are community meals, they're coming together, they're for everybody, they're a place for us to get together and and share and enjoy and you know this is a service that's for everyone and I think there is a challenge there about making it so it's not just for poor people because mm -hmm. it wants to be identified as you know someone who's lacking. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about a few different ways that people are actually trying to you know to do that and one of the big ways that you can really draw folks to the program and make it very attractive to everyone is to have that connection to programming. Uh, I know that a lot of folks, I would say many, many people who op operate summer meals are doing so alongside activities, whether it's at a school, uh, a boys and girls club, uh, a day camp, or uh, some kind of uh, organized activity. Uh, if you're signing foods, both meals and activities, uh, be sure to highlight that connection in your outreach materials. A lot of the materials that we're sharing this year have a blank 8.5 by 11 spot where folks can include information about their community-specific programming. And we really encourage people to highlight that activity piece because that really is a big added value to folks. To reach out to nearby activity providers, whether it's a rec department or a church camp or a daycare. Daycares especially, we've seen a lot of interest in the meal program this year. Uh, and invite them uh, to participate in your meal program. For some of these folks, they may already have some of their own activities, but they may not have a meal program in place. So uh, while, of course, they would also have the option to participate in meals, uh, one way to do that is to invite them to, to your site. And so whether it's a church camp or a daycare or a rec department, um, many, uh, sometimes in some Vermont towns, these may be walkable. You know, the, the site may be across the road or it may be down the street or it may be across the green. Um, and it may be a real value added for these folks. Um, it's something that is going to boost your participation, leverage those reimbursement dollars for the health of the program, and then really also, Nancy, just, you know, serve a big need there in the community. So I think that's right. I think if you, and certainly if you know there are other providers, other organizations that are doing activities with kids, you really should have a conversation with them because you, it could be a real learning. They may not know about your program. You may find out that that could be another meal site, could be another opportunity. Um, so this is, you know, this is an interesting thing to think about again too because the USDA does not require activities for summer meals. You could have just a food site, but in general, we find that is often not enough to get kids out. And so you could, you know, if you don't have extra staff to hire to do, you know, hours and hours of activities, well, maybe you think about volunteers. Maybe you have a musician or an artist come in and do something for a little bit. Or maybe something, sometimes you do just simple little contests. People have done simple little activities that are real motivators for kids to come to, um, to sites to make it fun. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know, your food's probably fun, but activities um, might appeal even more and seem like, oh, more fun. There's food and something for me to do one in there. And like I said, I would really just encourage folks to, to, to have that conversation with folks who, who may be partners in the community, uh, but who don't, um, who don't have the meal program operational in their area to just have that conversation, see if they want to come and take part. Uh, like I said, I know for some daycares, I've heard stories of folks where the daycares 
uh, they bring kids to the meal site. And it's a great thing because the daycare hadn't been able to offer meals in the past. And thanks to the Summer Meal Service Program, Summer Food Service Program, they were able to take part in that. Um, and one important part, if you are going to market your meal program to others who are outside of your organized pro programming, you of course want to be very clear in communicating the dates and the times of the meal service so that groups and families can plan to participate. If you want to increase programming by leveraging those partnerships, of course you want to make sure that people understand very clearly when the meals are available. And so you know, we do um, take the information you put in your online agreements and we give that to a national database so people can um, either text or go into a website and find where there are drop-in um, free meals. And so there are sometimes places in communities where there they could have drop-ins, but it's a small community. They, they say the site's open, but they don't really do much advertising. They're just thinking about their kids and their particular summer um, program. And I want you to, to think a little beyond that and, and not just about your kids or not making assumptions that there aren't other kids out there that aren't part of your program that would come. Um, I see that a lot in our smaller, smaller towns that um, people set up open sites but don't really advertise it. They just think, oh, we took, we took care of it when we advertised that we were having this summer camp and, and some folks signed up. But you know, there, there could be other people, there could even be people, because of that national database, people traveling through the area, people coming in for camping. Um, there could be other people that you don't know. So you want to make sure your site is visible. And I think at some point we'll talk about mm -hmm. signage, you know, when the meals are being served and road signs. But you want to somehow get people, make it visible and get people to your site. Let them know how to get there. Mm -hmm. um, have it be a visible thing in the community and then have it be ongoing. So again, you're teaching people that this is something that's going to be happening ongoing during the summer. That's great. Thank you, Nancy. So uh, in, in terms of outreach, it's critical for the success of your program to develop and carry out an outreach and promotion strategy. Uh, and so we're going to look at the six most commonly used outreach methods and we're just going to encourage folks um, as we are looking at this together to think about when you're thinking about your own program, uh, you know, who will you coordinate your outreach efforts with? Who are your partners? We just talked about that, but who can be a partner in, in not just participating in the meals but also in the outreach piece to make sure uh, many, many uh, community members know about the program and feel comfortable benefiting from it, taking part in it, eating meals together. Um, are there any missing pieces? Any, is there anything we discussed today that maybe is missing from your outreach that you would like to include? And, and how soon can you begin outreach? Because as Nancy mentioned, now is a great time to start. Um, school is still in session. You can leverage uh, the, the, the networks, uh, school, the school newsletters, school announcements, the robocalls. Um, so now is a great time to begin, and as we talk about these different pieces, um, you know, try to apply this to where you're at and see um, what, you know, what am I already doing well? Is there something I'm doing that they're not even talking about uh, and I would like to share? Or is there something that maybe is here that I hadn't thought about before that I would like to incorporate? So um, you have an opportunity now while school's in session to connect to those cool people who know family. So food service people in your schools, first of all, they know who the hungry kids are. They know more about the community, especially if they're working with free and reduced applications. But you also have school nurses and guidance counselors. Mm -hmm. It would be really good for you to share the information about your program with them so that they know what's going on and can share it with families or can give you some tips about reaching out to families. And there's a little block here, Derek, about the kickoff event at start. Um, it reminds me, I just got a poster from Steve mm -hmm. Marinelli about his carnival. Mm -hmm. And maybe when we send the materials out, we yeah. will send out the carnival poster so that people can see an example of a kickoff event. Sure. So you can do uh, one, a one-day event, maybe it's outside of your regular promote um, programming. It may be on a Saturday or some off time that you wouldn't do that on an ongoing basis, but it's a way to advertise your program in the community, make it really fun. Maybe you're not going to have activities all the time, but you want people to, you want to drum up interest in your site. So you maybe have a one day, couple hour bash somewhere where you get um, posters or you get, um, you know, you get volunteers and you get some, some fun things going on and that can just be a one, one time blast that also helps people learn about meals being at your site over the summer. That's a great point. And uh, Angelique Franzoni, who uh, does great work down in Wyndham Northeast Supervisor Union, sent a link to us from USDA that has uh, it's some 
tool to help folks with outreach from a sponsor perspective. We're going to send that out to everyone. Uh, so thank you, Angelique, for sending that out. And everyone, if you would like to look at additional materials from the United States Department of Agriculture, there's a PDF there uh, regarding sponsor outreach that you, can, that you can use as well. So let's go ahead and get on down to the first one we mentioned here. I want to make sure we don't run out of time. Is the, uh, we'll start with the beginning. We'll start with one of the documents that's actually uh, required as a part of the sponsor agreement, which is the media or the press release. And so on the right-hand side of the page, now, Nancy, this document is available on the agency's website under Summer Food. This is the uh, media release. I see there is um, some, some model language. And uh, just looking around, thinking about some of the stuff that could really be helpful to folks as they're trying to get their media release together, is to be sure to include information like the list of sites, when they'll be operating, the meal service times, when they will start and end, uh, to use sponsor stationery so folks know that it is from the sponsor that they provide contact information so people can follow up with um, any questions they might have. And also wanted to note that if folks prefer, if there's language that you would like to use um, that's specific to your program or your community, you can write your own release. Uh, you want to use a format similar to this one so it can't be a poster. It actually has to be a media release. Um, includes the non-discrimination statement at the bottom and it needs to include the income guidelines uh, for enrolled sites and camps. So if it's not an open site, if it is an enrolled site or camp, then that income guideline. Yeah, there's there. actually, yeah, yeah. There's, there are, if you can see at the very top, there's this little blip about use for open sites. And so in the templates that we provide, there's a different one if you've got a closed or a, mm -hmm. a camp site. Um, I just want to say a little bit about this um, non-discrimination statement, which is this huge growing long thing. Um, but it actually, um, adds a certain um, le level of integrity to what you're doing. So not only is it saying that your site is connected to a federal program, it's also letting people know in a way that it is for them, that it doesn't discriminate, that they have a right to file a complaint if it feels like the site is not accessible to them for, um, for certain reasons. So that's just something to think about. It's kind of a little a high hat that, um, you know, it's difficult to add a required non-discrimination statement to all of your materials that go out to the public. But that's what the USDA um, requires. Um, and I realize if what it's doing, it is helping people know that your program gets this certain money that then means they have access, that that program is for them, that there is public money from a federal level being made available and they, um, they can go there and get food. Right. So once again, just as a recap, I want to make sure folks know there is the model media release available on the agency's website. Folks can write their own as long as they're in the middle of the page. You're able to include the required information in the release. And one thing I also wanted to note that occasionally comes up is that sponsors are required to make a public announcement about the summer program to the media. Um, you are not required to pay to have the program announced. Yes. So most of your uh, media outlets will print some sort of an announcement about the program, but do not feel like you're having to put money toward this. This is something that you submit to the media that you ask them to share. It's a press release that you send, but you're, you're not having to pay for ad space here. Right. So this one that we could do a template for, you have to do at least that one because it has those, that required language from the USDA in it that talks about the funding and the free and reduced price meal qualification and all of that. Um, you can do other types of media, but you have to do at least this one mm -hmm. so you're covering the USDA um, requirements that. And you'll also realize, because I think even though you send this out, you don't really have uh, control over what they print. They may print without the non-discrimination, mm -hmm. but just make sure you send that along and that will take care of your, um, what you're required to do. Great. And also just wanted for folks who, who don't know, the income guidelines that, is, that are noted there um, on, in the middle of the page, that is available. Those income guideline numbers are embedded in the media releases for closed enrolled and camp sites. So it's not something you have to go find yourself. It's, not, it's readily available on the state agency's website. So uh, the next step is the outreach posters and the signs. And actually what I have here that you can see under Summer Meals Resources, this is a screenshot from Hunger Free Vermont's um, website that has a lot of links to things like the Summer Meals Planning Toolkit, a poster template, uh, templates for yard signs, outreach and public service announcements. 
uh, outreach tips from USD. That's actually a link to the state agency's media release there on the website. So if you click on the top where it says outreach posters and signs, that is a link to this very page where you have lots of resources that are available to view, to share, and to download. Uh, a couple of examples at the bottom is the summer meals poster and the site list where folks can enter uh, specific information about their community. We really want to encourage people to use this page as a resource. And if you have a question or you need further resources or you don't feel like the resources that are available meet your needs, please contact me, Derek Lambert, at Hunger Free Vermont for additional resources and outreach support. Uh, and Nancy, I know there's something new that the state agency is making available this year as well. Can you talk about the summer meal business cards that's yeah. available? Yeah, so we, um, for the first time, try, are trying this. You can let us know if this ends up being a helpful thing. You can see up on the right side, there's this little card that talks about, um, I can't see the whole thing because we're, we're hiding it a bit on our screen, but it talks about the summer food, just a little blip about what the summer food service program is, but it has a place that you're not seeing on the flip side that you could write information about your particular site. Mm -hmm. And our idea was for people to be able to order some for free from us. We would send you whatever number that you wanted. And you could hand those out and about in the community to help people, to inform people. Just a little, you know, a little something you could leave in places or give to people to hand out as they're working with other people. So we are printing up some materials and um, we do have some, some of these printed materials that you're seeing here. So that's um, what you've got to decide. What can you afford to print? Are there materials that you can use from us and that are already printed? There are tons of ideas out on the internet. I bet if you go to that link that we sent you earlier from Angelique, you're going to find a whole bunch of other templates. And, and write us if you, I would be happy to search for a particular thing or a particular layout that you're looking for. And if you just can't afford to print something and you want to ask us to print, send me a note. I won't be able to accommodate everybody, but we have some, a little bit of money to help mm -hmm. with printing. And of course, we've already use some of it to print up materials we think people should have. But we're going to be ordering more of the business cards, so let me know if you want some of those. Great. So Nancy, just to be clear, uh, you have your link here. You can click here to send you an email where it says Nancy Lewis. And if they would like this business card to leave uh, at the school library or at the rec department or um, at the gas stations for families to pick up, they can just let you know. They can make a request and then yeah. those would be delivered yeah. to them. So, um, so they can't really click in the webinar right now. Mm -hmm. So they will be able to um, click when they get the materials mm -hmm. from us in mm -hmm. the PowerPoint that you're going to send. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to show a slide that has my email address on it, nancy.lewis at state.vt.us. But I think all of you already have that email because you've been communicating with me about your agreement. So um, let me know if you want some business cards. Great. So thank you. So outreach posters and signs, you know, there are many, many templates out in the out uh, there uh, with USDA, with Hunger Free Vermont, with the state agency that might work. We actively try to promote those. There are ways to request these materials from both Hunger Free Vermont and the Agency of Education. So I guess the, the, the what I'm hearing from you, Nancy, is that you don't feel have to feel like you you don't have to come up with all of this. There's a lot of it already out there. You can tell me if I'm wrong, Derek. Both of us are interested in getting feedback about what works for mm -hmm. people. If you have mm -hmm. a certain format or a way of advertising that you, you really think did a good job in your community and you'd like us to make some of those materials available, I think we would work to try to make them, to try to get some more printing sure. done, try to design things to make them available to more people and to help you offset costs. So, um, so give us some feedback. That's great. Thank you, Nancy. Another great way to raise the uh, profile of your program is kickoff events. Uh, this year there are four kickoff events that I'm aware of. There is one in Brattleboro, there is one in Milton, there's one in Newport, and also there just this past Saturday there was a kickoff event in Burlington for Kids Day. Uh, and so kickoff events uh, have also occurred in Cabot. Last year there was a kickoff event in Cabot with the Race to Read program. Uh, so kickoff events are a great way to put the spotlight on your summer food program, to boost participation for the event itself and then also over the course of the summer, and attract community partners. Um, basically, a kickoff event is where you have some kind of, of special occasion. It doesn't have to be anything grandiose, just something that's out of the ordinary, something that occurs 
uh, to raise and to make people aware of the fact that free meals are available. It might be tied in with literacy. It might be tied in with uh, partner organizations such as the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, it can really look a lot of different ways, but basically it's where the community is coming together, uh, potentially at the start of summer or maybe even mid-summer to boost participation. Uh, and they think, you know, these are events that are generally held in easily accessible locations that people can easily come to, uh, get an experience of summer meals, have a connection, understand the kind of different community partners that are, that are involved in making this service available, and there may be some kind of event, something fun going on. Uh, and this could be a game, it could be, uh, it could be uh, some kind of tied in with an event that's already occurring. I know in Brattleboro it's being tied in with the strolling of the heifers. So it may not be a completely new event, uh, it could be, but it might also be piggybacking on an event that's already taking place in the community and using that as a leverage point to serve meals and to make people aware of the meal program. And you also, and I think you're talking about these um, in the second bullet here, it doesn't have to be before mm -hmm. um, meals begin. Of course, you want people to come as early to know as soon as possible about it, but you can do booster events. Mm -hmm. So you can um, go to festivals and you know, leverage other opportunities mid-summer um, to tell people again, remind people again that you've got your program going. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so once again, we, you know, it, it, it's encouraged. I think a lot of people are really seeing the usefulness of having these events in parks, town squares, uh, on the school campus, community centers. Uh, I know the one in Brattleboro this year is going to be hosted by the Brattleboro Boys and Girls Club. And once again, these are great opportunities for your meal program, but also for your community partners. It's an event that raises the profile of the services they provide uh, while also providing those meals to, to the community. So you want to think about that if you're um, at a, you know, being there to provide information that not only are you going to be serving, possibly serving meals to kids at these pickup events, but you may be wanting to inform other people with resources about what you're doing. So have your you know, elevator speech ready, maybe have a little flyer or something to telling them how they could be involved. If there are certain resources that you need, you might have to be ready with your list to say, oh yeah, we could really use help in this way. Um, you know, just talking up your program and um, letting people know what a service you're providing to the community. Yeah. And so as Nancy mentioned, you know, if, if you are interested in a kickoff event, either as your program is getting started or sometime over the course of the summer, uh, feel free to contact me, Derek Lambert, at dlambert at hungerfreevt.org. I have my email address posted at the, on the final slide of this webinar. would be happy to work with you one-on-one uh, -on -one, and then also would be happy to connect you to those sponsors who have really already done this. And we find that for many people who start this, they continue it because they're seeing the value and the utility of an event that really is reminding parents, reminding kids, that this meal program is out there and that it's available. Uh, also, another way is, the, is public service announcements. A great way to, to reach out to families is, is to make you know some kind of planned PSA announcement. This doesn't have to be uh, something that's expensive. We really encourage people, Nancy, you know, as you mentioned earlier, to utilize schools as trusted information for parents. Uh, and you know, school that can be a newsletter, it can be an announcement in the morning, it can be a flyer that's sent home in a kid's backpack. People really trust schools. They get a lot of their information from schools. In many cases, in many Vermont communities, the school is, is one of the cornerstones of, of the, the places where people work and live. And so thinking about ways that you can do that, uh, the, there's another slide later on, but robocalls are another great way that for, at no cost to you, you can leverage that resource of the community. Uh, and, and once again, now is a great time to, to have that conversation because I was actually in in Barry today in one of the schools, they've got 18 days of school left before summer break. So, you know, 18 days of school, that's about three and a half more weeks. So um, there really is still that time for the schools to leverage some of those resources they have to help you get the word out. And you could be really at a very um, personal, individual level making a difference for some kid who's sitting in school thinking about, wow, I get all this food. I really rely on these school meals. They're going to stop in 18 days, 17 days. I don't know what I'm going to do. And if they find out that they've got, there's a meal program nearby that they can get meals from, they're going to be super psyched. Mm -hmm. That's true. And also, you know, just one reason I have, a, there's a picture of the Vermont Department of Health there is, this is another way where as you get the word out, you know, different folks in the community can pick up on this and help distribute this information as well. 
Uh, actually, I was attending a kickoff event in Newport last year and had some materials about summer. Uh, was up there walking around seeing what else was going on in the Vermont Department of Health. Right there onto the left-hand side of their table was distributing the summer meal side list for Orleans County. So this is really something, you know, public service announcements are helpful because schools are there. Uh, you know, local radio stations and newspapers uh, could be interested to promote events, could be interested to make sure folks know about the summer meal program. I know down in Wyndham Southeast Supervisory Union, they had some public service announcements on the radio stations. And, and then you just have other community organizations who, you know, maybe they're not thinking about summer meals because it's not their day to day. Um, but if you can have a conversation with them, they can get really excited about this. I know, you know, we have, I see Jana, Jana Brown on the call from the Children's Literacy Foundation. We've uh, been really fortunate to work with them and try to make these connections between reader, reading programs and the, meal, and the summer meal program. The Vermont Department of Health has been really enthusiastic in getting the word out about this. There have been radio stations and newspapers. There really, uh, you know, Nancy, there can be a real wealth of community partners out there that are willing to expend some of their time and effort to make sure these programs are known about. And, the, and, and we're actually seeing almost like more mandating about it because there's more awareness. These, this is a federal program from the USDA. They're realizing there are other federal programs that are natural partners that should be having goals around summer food. So this, the last couple of years we've seen um, from rural development, the HUD, the housing development folks wanting us to make connections with our local communities. That's a push down from the federal level. And I wouldn't be surprised if also from um, the health department at a federal, at the health agency at a federal level, that they're also recognizing summer food is an important part of um, kids' health and they want their employees or people getting money from them in the different agencies in the different states to also know about summer food and to be promoting it. So they're they're asking us at a really high level to be partners and to spread the word and to work together. Right. So these kinds of announcements, and, and one thing, there's a link here to public service announcements. If you click on this orange link, and once again, this will be available on the slides that I send out, this actually links to a about a four or five page Word document that has a lot of model language that you can use around summer meal sites. Um, that you can use to share with schools to make announcements in the morning or on the robocalls, that you can share quick, you know, 10, 15 second PSAs for local radio stations and newspapers to promote summer meals, and also to give out to other organizations. So if you're looking for language, if you're a little intimidated about how to even phrase something like this, this link here at the top, Public Service Announcements, will take you to some of those resources. Um, Basically, there are blanks where you can enter information about your specific community and the specific site uh, and when they'll operate, and then you can give that out to folks to share. So. And even the more I'm thinking about, you know, what might attract people or what might help people, if you have special menus, you know, if you've already planned ahead, you might even let people know about some of the meals and mm -hmm. you can get them interested that way. So you think about different materials that you have about your program that you could share, what different information about the program that you could share with people. I'm thinking about in Middlebury last year, I know the cook uh, was on one of the local radio stations every morning who was, she was basically saying what was going to be served that day yeah, for lunch. Like and so, um, you know, that may or may not be a possibility in every community, but especially in a lot of our smaller communities, there may be some personal relationships there. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity to, to, to leverage those outlets to educate people about Well, maybe right. you're having, you know, you're highlighting a certain farmer's food. Maybe he's donating something a particular day and he's going to come in. Maybe that's something you want to highlight. So maybe it's not something you do every day, but is there a highlighting time? Just something that, think about what you're excited about with your mm -hmm. program. Share that. That's a good point. So thank you, Nancy. And to follow up on what we said earlier with robocalls, you may know these already if you have a student, if you have a child in if you have a child in school and there's a snow day or an emergency closure for some reason, uh, these are the calls that go out from the school to all of the parents, to all the homes where children are enrolled in the school uh, that have some kinds of message. It may be the school's closing today, school will be closed tomorrow, uh, will open up next Monday for whatever reason. Well, these, these calls, which is already using a structure that's established, it's already something that is in place, this free service can also be used to quick, quickly reach the parents uh, of children enrolled to educate them about the summer meal program. It's a reliable, trusted source of information, and schools, as Nancy has mentioned, are really active partners in outreach uh, and should be, you know, should be thought of as leverage points 
to make folks aware of the availability of summer meals in the community before the end of the school year. And again, we've got about three and a half weeks before school lets out. This is probably a good time to go ahead and make that connection because as the school year gets closer and closer yeah. to the end, it's going to get pretty hectic. Yeah, so I know we're putting the pressure on to ask you to think through the details to get, you know, get all of that worked out for, you, for your programs, but to the extent that you have information, share it now. Yeah. And once again, don't hesitate to use a lot of the templates that we have. So you don't have to sit there and think about how you want to phrase it or whatever. You can use that template, uh, place that phone call, send that email, just go ahead and get it in the pipe while there's a few weeks left before folks run out of time. Uh, but robocalls, people really find that that is something, you know, oftentimes outreach or advertising uh, can involve some level of expense. Uh, whether it's printing or whether it's paid advertising uh, or even just the time that it takes to do outreach. Robocalls is one of those that is, you know, it's absolutely free from a financial perspective and once you have that request in and once it's processed, it's not something you're having to actively do on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and once again, finally I'd like to note that these can be calls that occur before the school day ends and they can also be programmed to occur uh, at regular intervals over the course of the summer. So you may have one before school lets out, you may have one the first week of the program, and you may have one in the middle of the summer. So, you know, based on a conversation with your school administration, there may be some flexibility there to really have some follow through on the outreach that you're doing. I'm going to take a minute and see if we have any questions. I'm going to unmute the lines here. We've been doing a lot of talking and just want to make sure uh, that if any of you folks out there have any best practices, or I also see we have one or two new sponsors uh, on the line here. Uh, are there any questions so far, uh, either from partner organizations or folks who are going to be um, folks who are going to be participating in the, in the meal program? Any questions or thoughts about the outreach so far? You can speak. I've unmuted the lines. You can also type in a question if you would like to have something discussed here during the webinar. Any questions out there? I'll be Just getting background noise. Yeah. Okay. Well, so we'll keep moving forward. Go ahead, Nancy. Well, I was just asking about. I saw there was some questions, but you'd already looked at those. Yeah. You knew what they were. Yeah. Okay. That's that's uh. Yeah. So. Don't want to miss anybody. That's exactly right. Yeah. Let's double check here. Um, and you know, as we as we move forward, um, we'd just like to note that schools, libraries, and community newsletters or websites are also a great place to do outreach. Um, something I've, I've noticed in some of our partner organizations, especially libraries, I'd say, uh, libraries have really been excited about the meal program when they've been able to implement it. And we've seen uh, they put people have put buttons on their website. People have put links to the program with information. They've included information about the meal program in their newsletters. Um, a lot of times, school libraries are able to include information about their programs, including meals, in the school newsletters. Uh, and you know, not every library is able to operate the program. Uh, in some cases, it's in someone else. But I think that approach of really you know, integrating information about the meals into the regularly scheduled programming and looking at connections to other partners to get the word out about that is a really good model and a template um, that is, again, in most cases, that, you know, in many cases it's free or low cost. Uh, and also it allows folks to really begin to see the meal program as an integral part of what's already there. Yeah, so I think we, what we're seeing with the libraries is a real win-win there, situation there. Libraries are excited because they have more kids coming in doing the summer reading, which mm -hmm. is uh, part of their mission, and they they're really um, energized about that, and they they want more kids in. So the food is bringing more kids into the, their program, but maybe more kids are reading and doing things that wouldn't um, wouldn't be happening if the food wasn't there. That's so um, that's been a nice a nice partnership, and just one example. And I'm guessing there are other things out there that we don't know about that it takes. It takes a little legwork in your community to find out who's having what for an event or a learning session or whatever that can use some food. Yeah. And so, you know, local newsletters, what we find is that, you know, many times these folks are often uh, are looking for content to include in the mailing. They're trying to get as much information about what's going on in the community as possible. So these are folks who will be very interested to receive and to disseminate the information you're going to put together. 
there often is not a lot of space, so you want to keep the information brief and to the point, uh, including the dates of operation and the meal service times, of course. You want to provide contact information for families who would like further information. There will be a lot of people who will be very interested in what you're offering, but the newsletter may not give you enough space to really provide all of the details. So make sure you include contact information so people can follow up with questions. Um, I checked and I looked into the USDA's regulation. I know the, the non-discrimination statement is a really important part of making sure that people understand that these programs are available to all people. Uh, I recognize as well that in, in somewhere like a newsletter, you may have very limited space. So USDA has said that if the announcement is half a page or less, uh, you can use the shortened non-discrimination statement, which is highlighted in red. Uh, this institution is an equal opportunity provider and employer. One thing to note is that it's just the text needs to be the same size for the entire announcement, including That's the non-discrimination statement. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because we want people to be able to read it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just make sure the, the print is the same size. Uh, and if it is a shorter announcement, which like I said, uh, in, in many newsletters you'll be limited on space, you can use uh, the highlighted text there in red uh, that will serve as your non-discrimination statement. There are other resources for outreach. I've included a few here. Uh, we have a, a, a page about raising awareness with lots of links to materials from the USDA's website. We have the link that uh, we shared from Angelique today about sponsor outreach. Hunger Free Vermont has a list, a host of summer meals uh, resources, uh, including posters, announcements, etc. Share Our Strength, the national organization, has a summer meals outreach toolkit that folks can use. Uh, and then there's Vermont Institute of Education. I know you've linked to a lot of different places as well. But as you are filling out your sponsor agreement, you will note that there are a host of links and a host of materials that can be used as well. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else you want to note here, Nancy, but one thing I would like people to realize is that when you receive the slides to today's PowerPoint, all of the orange text is linked. So people can just click right there and they will have links to all of these materials for outreach. Well, what, you know, when I look at the sign and I'm thinking about, you know, the opportunity where you're inviting people to come and meet other people, I wonder if there are other people, other providers you want to invite to the site because their mission is also to do some outreach. So there might be some partnering going on there, making the best use of everybody's resources, the time families are taking to travel to the site, the time that um, some other agency it would have an opportunity they would have to see a bunch of kids together. So just think about that. Is there a way to um, then make a partnership more robust and help other people serve their mission, help families get families get access to more resources, or even know about more activities like the library programs or some special camp that's going on in the community. Mm -hmm. So those other places may invite, um, may welcome the opportunity to come tell about their programs at your program. Just a thought. That's great. Thank you. So once again, we're going to, uh, we're actually a little ahead of schedule, which uh, doesn't always happen, but we're a little ahead of schedule. We're going to unmute all the lines uh, a second time, and if you have any burning questions, things you would like to discuss before we uh, finish up today, please um, feel free to share. So all of the lines are unmuted, uh, and if there are any questions about how to go about doing outreach, how to improve your outreach uh, initiatives, or feedback you'd like to give us about what we can do to share uh, more and better information with folks out there. Uh, now is a great time. Are there any questions out there from partner organizations, summer meal sponsors, or others? Yeah. That's what's that. mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, I agree. Oh, I agree. Oh, I agree. No, the statistics. Um, Got a little feedback there. Is there any, uh, any questions? You replace one. Any questions you might have? He's an average teacher, not even with a good teacher. He's at the high school level. You can raise the. Oh yeah, that's a good point that Angelique brought up. Um, there is, if you're if you're looking to do some of your own printing, uh, the vendors that we have uh, identified that is really able to provide quite high quality printing at, at a low cost is uprinting.com. It's an online printer. Um, I will send this link out in the materials that go out. Um, I worked with Angelique down in Wyndham Northeast Supervisory Union last year, and her experience was that they were able to provide printed materials uh, at a lower cost than she had found elsewhere. And I'll just read it directly from her comment. She um, said that the brochures were glossy, colorful, and reasonably priced, and they were processed uh, quickly. So if you have any uh, questions about, you know, 
about these resources, I'm going to um, send out a chat link to uprinting.com. This will be for everyone. And if you have a need for printing materials, as, as uh, Nancy has said, that you know, the Agency of Education is able to provide some resources in terms, of, in, in, in terms of the business card. USDA has some printed materials that will be distributed in the next couple of weeks. Um, there are resources available on the Hunger Food Vermont website and these other resources that you've seen. But if you are just wanting to print something very specific and you're trying to do it at a reasonable cost, uprinting.com uh, is a pretty, it's a pretty reasonably priced way to do it. And the feedback we're getting from partners is that they're happy with the quality of their work. So that's just another another thing for folks to note. So I don't guess we have any other questions. If you have um, anything, please type it in in the next couple of minutes and we will answer. Uh, if you missed a webinar, we did five of them this year. If you missed a webinar, the good news is you can access the entire 2015 Summer Meals webinar series. The link that you have there will take you to the YouTube channel where all four of the, the, the previously recorded webinars are available. And that same link will work for this webinar once it is recorded and uploaded on YouTube. So you have the link that you need to access any and all of the webinars that have been produced this spring. Uh, if you still have more questions beyond the scope of what we've discussed, you can contact Nancy Lewis at the Vermont Agency of Education or Derek Lambert, myself, at Hunger Food Vermont for additional support. Uh, and Nancy, I know. You know, summer is not ending here. We're actually about to ramp yeah, we're up. Just, we're we're just getting now. started, but this is the last chance that we have the yeah. platform of the webinar. Are there any kind of final thoughts you'd like? Yeah, to well, what I want to say is if you're listening to the webinar now and you're going, oh my goodness, these guys are amateurs. I do this great thing that's so much better than what they're talking about. Please send it along to us because we pay attention to what people are doing. We share it with other people. We get excited to hear about what you're doing. So if you just have great stories you want to tell us, Send them along to us. And I know USDA also is trying to collect stories. So um, it's not just us giving you information. You are really teaching us about what works with kids in your community. What are the creative things that you've come up with? So um, send that information to us too. That's great. And if you're having any problems, if you're feeling at any point like you're in over your head or you're feeling frustrated or confused, uh, Please don't feel like you have to do it all on your own. Please don't feel like there isn't any support. The, the, you know, the, the Vermont Agency of Education, Hunger Free Vermont, we are here to provide the support that people need to thrive in their use of these programs. So please just reach out to us. Use the resources that are available. Uh, and, and, and remember that as you leverage these resources, as you put these best practices into place, you're only more likely to see a positive response from the community. So once again, I want to thank everyone for listening today. Uh, again, today's webinar has been recorded and will be made available on YouTube. You will receive links to the slides, uh, including all of the, the orange text, which is a hyperlink to a, to a website or to a PDF or to a, a Word document that you can use to support your program. So once again, uh, Nancy, thanks for taking your time as well. It's been a real pleasure working with you. Thank you, Derek, for all the hard work you're doing. All right. And one, and most of all, thanks to you folks for getting out there, for, for taking uh, the initiative, taking the plunge with the summer meals, uh, for making it happen in your communities. Uh, because without our without these local partners, there is no meal program. That's right. You're, so, you're where the kids are. That's right. So thanks, everyone, for listening today. Uh, we look forward to being in touch. This is not the end. Uh, we look forward to working with you as we get started with summer. Have a great day.